have the, the times as um, expected. But uh, as you know, there are a lot of other um, factors influence the times, like uh, wind direction. And in Beijing, we had the prevailing winds, most of the time headwinds, yep. which also was a factor that did not allow for the world best right. times. Thank you very much, Peter, and uh, I hope the preparations continue to go well. Thank you. So you join us back on the start of the women's quadruple skulls A final. Today there you can see in lane one Canada. Lane two is we're gonna to move to the Ukrainian combination. Extremely strong, extremely confident, extremely powerful. Great Britain, of course, now world champions after if you heard our uh, discussion earlier on, they got promoted to gold medal position after the disqualification of one of the Russian athletes. Russia, of course, not in this event at the moment. China, lane three. Welcome back to uh, my co-commentator. Great Britain there, world champions. A lot of expectation, a lot of expectation from a women's squad. This is the lead boat. Great Britain there, stroked by Annie Vernon, three seed of Francis Horton, Debbie Flood in two, Catherine Granger in the bow seat. Lane five, Germany, Catherine Boron, the great old dame of the sport, the women's sculling and the real talisman of uh, the German sculling team. Kevin Bornin in the bow seat, Manuel Lutzer in two, Britta Oppelt in three, and Stephanie Schiller in the strike seat. USA, lane, lane six on the outside, Leah Purnell from bow, Leanne Malkos, Kristen Brown, and Ellen Tomek in the strike seat. And looking a little nervous. I think they have a right to look nervous. This is a very <laughs> tough field, uh, Olympic event. Uh, they've all qualified, along with Australia, who won the B final. But uh, they've got um, quite, a big, quite, a, quite a steep hill to climb, and I can't believe that they will manage to have such a close-up race as we saw in that lightweight men's Coxless 4 that just went by. Focus obviously on Germany there, Katrin Boron, so often a champion in this event, so often unbeaten in this event for the early part of her career. And next to them, the champions from last year, Catherine Granger back in the stroke seat. They actually gave us the order wrongly there. Annie Vernon briefly had been in the stroke seat, but they put Catherine Granger back in the stroke seat. She is the... Oh, Canada there. Obviously some big trouble for the stroke. Anne-Marie Desvega, who lost her right skull. That's them over in lane one on the far side of the picture and now at the back of the field after Desvega lost her right skull and had to pick it up again and recover. Quick recovery, they're not far behind, but this is a devastatingly fast field, and Great Britain have taken three quarters of a length in 250 meters. And absolutely, it's a devastatingly, blisteringly fast start from the uh, British combination here. And last year, they were a little surprised by the Russian combination. They went into it extremely confident. They were absolutely devastated to lose on home turf, having been world champions before, sculling at 38 and a half strikes a minute, which is high, but it's really working as they stretch out to over a length lead. Catherine Granger there, re-promoted to the straight seat after a little bit of illness, and looks to be sculling and leading this crew absolutely fantastically. Uh, uh, Granger definitely the crew maker. She won a silver medal in the quad with a completely different crew in Sydney Olympic Games, and uh, she's been the the crew maker right the way through all her pairs and quads and other boats that she's been in. She tried the single, can't quite make it there, but there they are, 2.78 seconds up in 500 meters off China and Germany in third place. German quadruple skulls tend to get out in front and lead if they're going to win. They're not crews which tend to come from behind, so they've got a bit of work to do. And China, which beat Great Britain at the Lucerne Regatta and... Uh, caused a good deal of upset and a certain number of tears uh, are a half a length of open water adrift, something Absolutely. like that? This is an absolutely phenomenal start. I cannot really describe how amazing this is to have the Great Britain quad this far out in front of what is an absolutely fantastic field. It's, it's not as if the, this is a heat or you know, there's a huge disparity in, in terms of medals in terms of pedigree in terms of just aptitude but this british crew are absolutely destroying the field now a length almost two lengths to the good here i almost said it was an australian performance and of course they do have an australian coach in paul thompson so uh, they are as the australian pair was last yesterday just taking this field completely controlled and there is catching born now back in second place they've passed china and we have China being threatened, I think, by Ukraine in lane two, and uh, we'll see whether Yana Dementieva 
of Ukraine has got a smell of the Chinese and might think it's worth having a go at them. Canada, out of it early on with that early crab and the loss of a skull, back in contention. Great Britain through the 1,000 metres mark with a quarter of a length of open water. Yeah, the Germans actually starting to go with them now, as the, and it's the Germans tracking Great Britain out of the lead with China coming through in third position. Ukraine, US and Canada, as we've already said, that unfortunate mishap at the start, really putting pay to their chances. But Germany starting just to hold on and see if they can start making an invitation onto Great Britain or if Great Britain, as we come through into this third 500, all important third 500, can really lay down a marker at 35 strokes a minute, not high, to see if they can really start squeezing on and put a little more distance between them and the Germans tracking them. Extremely experienced Germans at 34 strokes a minute. So 34 strikes a minute, see if they can just track back into contention, and it looks like they're beginning to move on Great Britain. I think they're beginning to move. Um, what's in Kath Granger's mind at the moment in the stroke seat of that British quad is, where am I going to use my move? They've absolutely got a change of pace, they've got to move, but if they took it now, 750 metres or 700 metres to go, it might be too soon. So they're probably wise just to sit on it for a bit. It was just beginning to get a little bit hurried there in the British boat, and I think the whole field is really starting to move up. It's not just the Germans have started putting on a squeeze, but China's starting to edge back as well. They're not going to be close enough to challenge for a gold medal, but Britain are going to have to reassert themselves, start sending down those long strokes again if they're going to still stay ahead of this very, very strong German crew on home water. Do you notice how, unlike every other crew, we've had a uh, shot from behind, not one German looked out of that boat once in that sequence of shots. They are doing it all on their own race plan, and they are coming back because that's what their race plan. What is the difference there? 500 metres, and the German just took about three tenths of a second. It's not a huge amount. Britain still have what is a fairly significant advantage, almost just over a length lead there. And is this going to be too much for you for the Germans to come back up? It, it could be, but the German crowd is certainly doing its very best listen to them they're really trying to get this german crew up but i think that length is fairly constant now and it seems to me that granger now with the smell of the finish she can hear the stands she can she knows where the line is very experienced skull and she has, is moving faster than the other crews according to that graphic that's uh, 13 meters down there that's the gps with germany just 30 meters down let's see if they can start getting contact again as they come through 250 meters to go and great britain are starting to tie up a little as Germany start bringing themselves back into contention. They've just got contact now, but this is going to require an absolutely superhuman effort from the Germans if they're going to overhaul this length lead that the British have. Coming into 150 metres left, and it's Great Britain by not even a length now. The Germans have closed them down, but it's Great Britain very, very fluent and very confident. Germany's starting just to edge back. It's now down to three quarters of a length. They've got in turn about a length lead over China. They're also holding on to that bronze medal position. Now down to half the length. Great Britain holding on, but this is going to be close as the Germans really crank it with three strokes to go. Britain are across the line safely and world champions. Germany through in second and very tight on the line, but it's China picking up the bronze medal. Well, here they just managed to hold on. But they, did, uh, they, did, they did, as you say, just managed to hold on. I think they would feel that that was uh, a pretty controlled, well not comfortable, <laughs> look at them, <laughs> Debbie Flood there laid out flat on their back, but uh, I think that they felt that they would feel that that was in control, by no means comfortable, a very very hard race and a German crew restored to form that we haven't seen for some time and I think that that uh, combination of Boron Lutz, Uphelt and Schiller will be something that will please Jutta Lau, the coach, because she has got at least one Olympic medal boat that she can rely on from her large round and, and, and the single scholar who was in the quad in Lucerne uh, didn't even make the C final I think she was right down the field confirmation. Schmidt. so there we have confirmation 2 point uh, no a bit less than that but um, 1.21 1 